All right, guys, HackG version 3.91 was released yesterday, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to update your existing version or to do a fresh install, and we'll talk about some of the changes. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time here, thank you for clicking on the video. Now, as I just said, we just got a new version of HackChi 2, and this is version 3.91. And there are a bunch of different fixes and new features that they've implemented in this version. And we'll go through this list in a quick second. But for those who are not familiar with what HackG2 is, it is essentially a software that allows you to soft mod either your Nintendo Classic, Super Nintendo Classic, or your Sega Genesis Mini. Now, many people have already done this mod, and to update to the latest version, you've got one of two options. Obviously, if you've never installed it, you'll need to go to this website. Link will be in the description down below, and you just scroll on down to the installer. So you can see over here, we've got the HackG2-CE3.9.1 installer.exe, or you have a portable zip. The portable zip allows you to actually run this without installing anything. It's kind of like a self-contained application. I generally recommend that you use the installer, install it on your device. You tend to have less issues that way. Now, if you are like me and you've already got HackG installed, that's not a problem. You just have to double click on your version of HackG. It should open up in a quick second, and then it will prompt you that there is a new version, and all you need to do is click the update button. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna download, and I'm gonna fast forward through this process. And here we are. So once it is completed, it's actually really nice and simple. It exits the software, it reloads up the software, and as you can see right along the top here, we've got Hackchi version 3.91. So we are currently on the latest version. So big changes that have happened from this version over the previous 3.8 version are going to be just a few, you know, stability changes, some improvements in terms of the base code, but we also have a few additional features. Some of them I'm going to show you, some of them I'm just going to talk about. But the first one is that they've got an open with FTP button for the save manager. Now, opening anything with FTP is just a nice way to transfer files from on the console and off of your computer. It just kind of allows you to, to swap files quickly that way. So I'm not going to really show you guys that. You don't necessarily need that. It's just a nice to have but we do have another big feature that allows you to import the games from your device. So if you go over to the tools section, you can see there is now an import games from mini, which is really handy. So that means essentially if you had a bunch of games on the device itself, then you could actually import them from the device back onto your computer in the event that you needed to reinstall HackG or your database got erased or any of those sort of things. The next big feature over in the settings section allows you to disable scraping on import. So that's right over here where it says enable automatic information scrape on import. If for whatever reason you don't want it to automatically scrape data when you load a game into the software, uh, you can actually turn that off. I'm going to leave mine on because I do actually prefer that it does that. And then the next thing that they've got going on is the ability to split your games by genre in the folder manager. So if you go over to structure, you can actually go ahead and click on the customs. And right over here, you've actually got the ability now to split by genre. So if you wanted to do that, you can go ahead and hit the split by genre button, and you'll see that all of my games are now funneled into the correct folder. So there's action, adventure, fighting, and sports. Keep in mind, there may be some titles that are unidentified. So when I click on it, there's a bunch of games in here that I couldn't identify, so I would have to manually create that. And because this is a new feature, I'd imagine that over time, and once the games have their proper databases set up, this will be further optimized and we won't have to do this quite so much. So we're gonna go ahead and go back here, but another big thing here is the ability to change the actual core 
for the stock games. Right now, I believe everything is kind of running off of the canoe emulator, but you do have the option now where you can edit the internal game emulators, the ones that came preloaded with the machine with a RetroArch core or something else along those lines. So that's actually pretty handy if you prefer performance on a different core. And then there are two more updates here. You've got the ability to take a screenshot with the F8 button, but you can also do that right from here. If you click tools, they've got the screenshot option. So you can absolutely do it this way as well. And then the final thing that we're gonna talk about is under the mods hub. If you go into KMFD's mod hub, uh, you'll notice that everything populates. And one of the things that had to happen previously when you selected a specific mod if you went over here and you clicked on something to install, you would have to download and install the module, but it would require you to reboot the system after you were done installing. This is no longer the case, so it just essentially decreases the time that it takes to do all of these sort of mods, so that's always welcome. But that's pretty much it in terms of all the new features. There were a couple other things in terms of like optimizing the way that the scraper works and things along those lines. They enabled a factory reset on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive Mini and then a few additional translations plus a bunch of bug fixes. But that is pretty much it for the most part. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a few extra titles on here so you guys can see that process. Then we're going to load up my Super Nintendo Classic and give those games a little test run. And then that's pretty much it for this video. So let's go ahead and add in a few extra titles here. All right, so I just loaded up about an extra 100 titles into here. So you can see I've got kind of everything listed right within here. And what I would probably recommend you do is just click on some of them uh, just to make sure that the artwork is showing up the way it's supposed to. Uh, it looks like for the most part these are all going to be fine. The scraper does a really good job, but there is occasionally the odd title, depending on how it's named, uh, that it doesn't find either one, the correct box art, or two, it doesn't find any box art. Um, but for the most part, I have uh, been pretty successful, especially with like Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, those types of uh, consoles. It's pretty accurate and it works pretty well. So I'm pretty much good as far as I can tell. It looks like, yeah, everything is uh, good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now at this stage, you've got a couple of different options. Obviously we can export directly out to the console. In order to do that, you need to make sure that your console is connected with a USB cable that has data lines. Mine currently does. And the way that you know that is because once it's plugged in and powered on, you can go ahead and see that it is connected in here via SSH and it's good to go. Uh, the other piece as well as obviously in order to get this installed, you do need to have the mod itself installed on the PlayStation Classic. I'll leave a link below to a video I made last year that shows you how to do it. The process is still the exact same, so you can follow that tutorial if you need it. Now, as I said, you can obviously load this up to the machine itself. I always prefer to load these things up onto a USB drive, just it's a personal preference of mine. So I currently have a USB drive in my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and export to USB. It's gonna ask me where I want it to go. And in this case, I actually have a USB drive called Hackchi. So I'll click on that, I'll hit okay. It says that new games are gonna be moved to the unsorted folder, that's not a problem. We're gonna hit okay. And then you can see everything that we've got in terms of our games are all right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna clear it out, remove all the folders. I want everything to be on the main menu. So that way when you go to play a game, everything is gonna be visually there. So we're gonna go over to home, no folders. Everything is just gonna display exactly how I want it to. And uh, there's gonna be about 171 titles total, including the built-in ones. Once you're happy with that, you go ahead and hit OK. Again, if you prefer to filter this by, you know, the first letter, you can do that and just throw them all into uh, different folders that way. You can also split things, you know, equally. So this will be the A to E section, E to K. I don't really like doing that either. The other option, of course, is because we can load additional consoles on here, Game Boy, Sega Genesis, whatever it happens to be, you can actually split them up by the console itself as well. But again, for the purposes of my video here, we're just going to leave everything right on the home menu. Once you're happy with that, you go ahead and hit OK. It's going to go ahead and start transferring this information over to your USB drive. Obviously, if you have a USB 3.0 and it's connected into a 3.0 slot, it will happen much quicker. But I am going to go ahead and skip this process. Beautiful. So the export to USB is done. We go ahead and hit OK. And really that's all that we have to do at this point. Uh, we can go ahead and remove our USB drive. We can plug it into an OTG adapter. 
and run that through the back of the Super Nintendo Classic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we're gonna switch over to the on-screen view of the Super Nintendo Classic now. All right, so here we are. We are now on the main screen of the Super Nintendo Classic. And as you guys can see, all of the different games that I've added are absolutely here in full force. We've got 170 titles to choose from. Now, obviously you could have chose to load up the entire library. You could have done whatever you wanted. Um, but this is just kind of what I've done for the purposes of this video. Uh, now, other than that, just wanted to show you guys that it is up and running. Everything is good. Obviously, the new updates are not related to anything on console. They're all related to the actual tool to load games and to give you a little bit more flexibility there. But uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is jump into a title and we're going to test out one of the newly added games here. So let's go ahead and jump into some Street Fighter 2 Turbo and give this uh, give this a shot. And there you guys have it. This is the latest Hackchi mod for the Super Nintendo Classic, Nintendo Classic, and Sega Genesis Mini version 3.91. That's all I've got for you guys in this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have any questions at all. As always, I will leave any links that you need to do the download or if you need additional support from the uh, the Hackshi development group, I will leave access to their Discord down below as well. But like I said, that's all I've got. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I will talk to you guys again real soon.